making powerful performances which give voice to some uncomfortable truths. Lebanese playwright and director Christelle Khodr is exploring the ruins, the social, political and very physical wreckage of her homeland and its history in her play Ordali. Currently on stage here in Paris, she joins us in the studio to tell us more. Christelle, welcome. Thank you. Now let's start with the four characters at the centre of this play. They're involved in a sort of power struggle. Tell us more about that. Uh, the four characters, they have the same names as in their real lives. It's the four actors, Rodrigue Slaiman, Tariq Ya'oub, Roydib and Erin Jaim. Uh, and these uh, four characters, they gather on the 1st of September 2020 on a very intimate uh, place that they have uh, known very well that is in ruin. And they start uh, slowly to, uh, to unfold a memory in, in the theatre, uh, a theatre play that they have performed 20 years ago. And uh, the theatre play they are performing is uh, from The Pretenders of, uh, of Henrik Ibsen. And uh, inside the play of Henrik Ibsen, there are a lot of power struggles between uh, a king and a pretender, a, one, a person who wants to be a king. And in this play of Ibsen, it finishes with the, uh, what we call the civil peace, because Norway has suffered also from 400 years of civil war with uh, many uh, uh, tribes uh, 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 fighting, like it's a Viking play. And my play also starts uh, on the 1st of uh, September, which is the, the, the anniversary of uh, the creation of the Great Lebanon, excuse me. The state of Lebanon, in fact, and you mentioned there it's contemporary and historical. Well, the action starts shortly after those devastating explosions at the port of Beirut on August 4th, 2020, which killed more than 200 people and left hundreds of thousands homeless. A month later, French President Emmanuel Macron visited Lebanon, pledging France's support to the country in light of that tragedy. The characters of Ordali are listening to his speech very carefully, itemizing every word he says. Take a look at this clip. Corruption. De De fois. Fois. <laughs> Crise. Quatre Quatre fois. Fois. Catastrophe. Une, Une fois. fois. Reconstruction. Oui, oui fois. fois. CMA, CGM. Trois, Trois fois. fois. Avenir. Trois, Trois fois. fois. Histoire. Trois, Trois fois. fois. Sacrifice. Trois, Trois fois. fois. Volonté. Quatre, Quatre fois. fois. Espoir. Trois, Trois fois. fois. Désespoir. Deux, Deux fois. fois. <rire> Promesse. Une, Une fois. fois. Réforme. Trente fois. Explosion. Dix, Dix fois. fois. Enquête. Sept, Sept fois. fois. Victime. Deux, Deux fois. fois. Justice. Zéro, Zéro fois. fois. Now, that word justice and its opposite, impunity, seems to be a really important concern for you in your work. Explain how you wanted to raise the issue in this piece of drama. Um, uh, what happened in the summer of 2020 between the port explosion and the 8th of August where there was a big demonstration that was violently repressed by the authorities and uh, the 1st of September where there was the anniversary of the creation of a country that has never become really uh, a country with, with the citizens and to be gathered around this uh, anniversary just to um, uh, not even debate about justice, not have a real debate about justice, but just to talk about uh, um, the, how do we uh, share the reconstructions and how do, we, how do these politicians will share all this money that will come to the help and, and this uh, corruption that was, uh, that, that made, that was uh, uh, the, the real purpose of this explosion. It was never addressed. The in investigation has stopped. So uh, for me, this is what uh, really moved me in, in this play. This was the movement of injustice and how, and this is why it's called Ordali, the ordeal. This is why that my generation and I, I think we also have a responsibility. Uh, and this was the real uh, uh, question while doing the research, while doing the um, rehearsals, that how do we position, our, uh, position ourselves today 
uh, in everything that is happening. And we cannot say we are all, all the time victims, but we have to somehow uh, be in action and get into the action. And what is the action for us today as artists is to continue on practicing our uh, our theater and our telling and on telling these stories mm, and, and pushing for justice in in a way. Now you mentioned uh, Henrik Ibsen. There's a looser inspiration here from that play, uh, The Pretenders to the Crown, first performed in the 1860s. It's actually a historical play that goes back uh, to the 13th century. What is it about Ibsen's plays, his writing, that makes him feel relevant or contemporary today? Um, for, for, for what is it about, about Lebanon? Because it was also a, a tribe, many, many, many tribes fighting. And, uh, and one of the kings, the king who believes that he is a king, Hakon Hakonson, he believes, he never doubts about it. Whereas uh, the pretender to the crown, he always doubts in a way uh, the Jarl School, who is the pretender, he is a bit like us, like this generation that was born in the 80s, with all this doubt, all this anxiety, and they, they will somehow never be in power. This was the, the question about it, but especially that it finishes, the play finishes of Ibsen in the um, civil peace in Norway, because Norway has suffered from 400 years of, uh, of civil war, and, uh, and my play starts in the 90s and what do we do today with this country that we have inherited and with this ruling class that is a very very corrupted ruling class and the impunity exists not from now not from the 2020 it's from the end of the civil mm. war so there do seem to be some clear parallels there now another um, play of yours or augur Augur, sorry, in French, blends the recent history of Lebanon with the history of its theatre scene as two actors reminisce about making drama during the civil war in the 1980s. Let's get a feel for it in this short clip. بيتعاطى مع تاريخه كأنه أرشيف مسرح بالآخر بينا أنا وياك هون عم نمثل أول مسرحية مع بعض now, Augur was staged uh, last year at the same theatre where Ordali is being played, the MC 93 in Bobigny, just outside of Paris. That is an important detail because this is a play about Lebanese theatre, uh, being an actor in Lebanon, but it was staged in France. How is the theatre sector doing in Lebanon right now? Is there the cultural infrastructure to support diffuse work? Uh, Lebanon is suffering from uh, 2019 uh, an, economic, an economical collapse. And uh, since the beginning of the of the theater movement uh, in the in the 60s, the contemporary theater movement, uh, all the initiatives were very much personal initiatives, uh, whether it was uh, artists or companies. Uh, but now, with the with the collapse, uh, like like everything has uh, has fallen has fallen down. But in the Lebanese scene, uh, we are very much together because we really don't have the luxury of not being together. We are really organized between us and between generations also to be supportive to, to one another. This is uh, what I like a lot about it. Uh, so if I want to say yes, it's going well because there are independent artists and companies that are here and they are uh, working. But are we uh, always doomed to be in the reaction? Uh, I think that um, if we are always in, in a reaction, it can um, have an impact on our practice somehow. Mm, well, that artistic solidarity does sound like a very important foundation, though. But speaking of Lebanese theatre, Wajdi Mouad, who's also director of La Colline Theatre here in Paris, had the premiere of his play cancelled in Beirut at the Théâtre Mono last month because he was accused of uh, receiving funding from Israeli uh, institutions in the past. His critics say he's normalising relations with that country and they threatened uh, the theatre. So regional politics do come in uh, to the arts there, they affect the arts scene. What did you think when you heard about this? Uh, well, I think that first of all, we need to ask also uh, the actors of, uh, 
of the play who are Fadi Abi Samra, Bernard Hdeb and Aida Sabra, one of the, the three uh, Lebanese actors who are working currently and they are now rehearsing in France. What do they feel about it? Uh, because they are also very much engaged in the, uh, in the Palestinian cause. Uh, for me, uh, this kind of uh, the, the, the boycott as it was uh, uh, done during the apartheid period is something that is legitimate and I practice it. But sometimes when we use the boycott as, as a title, sometimes it can deserve the Palestinian cause and can be a kind of censorship. But I think that first of all, that the three ama amazing actors of the play should be asked this question and they ha need to, to verbalize about it because it's, I think it was very difficult for them. Mm, the importance of debate, dialogue, that sort of thing in, in these, th these events. Now, finally, we asked you uh, what's on your cultural radar at the moment and you recommended another play, The Love Behind My Eyes by Ali Shahroor. Tell us what you love about this play. Uh, what I, love, I like most about this play is the stretch in times and how it, it unfolds. And also at, in Ali's work, the love is always about also loss. So there, there is much of uh, uh, things that really moved me. Uh, and it's really a very, very sensitive uh, piece. Okay, Hi. so definitely one for us to check out. Thank you so much for joining us today, Christelle. We'll wrap up with a preview of that play, The Love Behind My Eyes, which is on at the Théâtre de la Bastille here in Paris in November. And a reminder that Ordali is showing now at the MCC 93 in Bobigny. Do check in with us here next time on Arts24. There's more news coming up just after this. Sao Paulo, a vibrant city today, but with deep scars from the past. In this building, thousands of prisoners were tortured. 50 of them didn't make it out. President Lula, the state nos deve isso. Brasileiros, nós merecemos que o governo se posicione. 60 years after, voices ring out over the horrors of the dictatorship. Voices that refuse to be stifled and demand justice. The Center for the Preservation of Political Memory holds memories and warnings. Se você não olha o seu passado, você corre o perigo de repeti-lo. A contested past, an ongoing quest for truth and justice. Brazil's dark era on France 24 and France24.com.